Panthers Nation, what up, those? Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Bluntness Sports Talk, and we are going into the film room today. I got my eight ball jersey on because we are talking about good old J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn is two games back from being on the injured reserve after missing about 10 games. That first game against the Bucs was in the rain, it's on the grass and stuff, and they had him on a pitch count. Very smart, practical. Obviously, you don't want to throw him back into the wolves in his first game, and a lot of fans were going crazy because they thought he was hurt again. He did look like he was laboring a little bit, but I think he was just out of shape and not used to running around after being off the field for 10 weeks, especially when he didn't play the preseason, only played a little bit of week one just to get back and miss 10 weeks. Now he's back. The Saints game indoors on the turf. He was moving well, man. Looked pretty good. We saw that big pass deflection. He played all of the reps this time at corner, man, and I really, really like what he saw. I got a couple clips I want to show you just to show him against the run, playing active in the zone, being physical and pressed, playing some off. Man, I got it all covered. But if you want to see the extended version, I have a full 18-minute breakdown on J.C. Horn on the Patreon patreon.com backsplash UB Sports Talk. It's the best way to support the channel, but also get extra value by getting extended breakdowns. Like I said, you're going to get stuff that doesn't get shown on the channel in terms of film breakdowns. I also have college tape and film breakdowns as well because I can't really put the college tape on YouTube without getting clapped with copyrights. So if you want to see all that type of stuff and support the channel and get extra value, hit that Patreon, patreon.com backslash UB Sports Talk. But regardless, JC Horn, man, he played a very very, very solid game. A lot of different variety of people he went against. Tight ends. Chris Olave, who was shorter but quick and fast. Um, he went against A.T. Perry, who was a little bit taller. Rookie, that's fast as well. He looked pretty solid. It gave up a couple catches, but the way this defense is designed, sometimes you play all a little bit soft. You don't give it a big play. As long as you catch and tackle, you're fine. So I'm not really concerned about the few receptions that he did give up. He looked very active and comfortable and J.C. Horn may be back, guys. We may have our guy back. I'm really, really rooting for him down the stretch. So let's go ahead and take a look. Just wanted to take a look at how he looks in press coverage, turning and running, opening it up, um, playing a little bit of off coverage, trying to turn and run and transition in that back pedal. Obviously, he needs to get his legs and his confidence back. He's been out a little bit, has to really, really tr trust his body and his technique. But I love what I saw from him in press coverage. Right now, he's going to be at the bottom of the screen here. And just watch this technique that he's going to show. Um, in the run game in support not very hesitant there but i love this play here because he attacks that outside hip when you play contain good recognition here to get out his break sees that it's a running play sees the crack block that got us in front of him see that that guy's blocking down that's going to let him know immediately that it's a run play watch he comes out the press realizes that he's blocking down gets his eyes in the backfield see that it's a toss play gets to the outside for a contain immediately and he's going to force the guy inside by attacking that outside leg swoops it Great tackle for a minimal gain. Good to see him getting involved in that running game there. All right, next play is going to be going against Chris Olave. This is the best play of the day. This is the play I knew that he was actually really starting to get back to himself out there playing with a little bit more confidence, not really as hesitating as much. And you can watch it here. He's going to get tried deep. He doesn't really get tried deep that much, but we love to see him running, turning, flipping them hips, finding a receiver's hands, and still breaking that up, man. This was a beautiful play by JC. Let's watch how it came together. All right, so, of course, off man here, and I talked about him not being as comfortable. You can see him almost give up a step with Chris Olave, who is a very, very fast receiver, but he's giving him a lot of cushion. JC's he's looking with his eyes in the backfield, and once he realizes that the ball is winding up and it's coming his way, he's going to start booking it, and he still has eyes behind him. You can't really run as fast when you're looking in the backfield, and that's where a lot of cornerbacks get in trouble. They either don't look back, and they're running, and then they overrun it and get P.I., or they get beat because they're looking in the backfield. J.C. does get beat just a little bit. You can see Olave really starting to run by him, but you can see J.C. now he has this step on Olave. He's he's further upfield than Olave. He's putting his head down, booking it, find the ball later. Look, find the ball, find the receiver again, realize that the receiver has a step, play the hands, and don't panic. Don't P.I., don't panic, play the hands. You see the receiver's going to throw his hands up. Just be patient. Don't contact him. Look. Got his hands in the way right here. The ball's not there yet. Ball's coming now. Just play the hands. You don't have to look back for the ball when you're in position and you don't panic. Just play the hands and run all the way through. And when I knew it was back, when that seat belt came out, I'm like, all right, we may have our guy back. This is going to be a nice view of it as well. You'll see the ball coming, how he, how he stays patient, stays patient. And Derek Carr really lets this thing ride. Watch, watch JC here. You can see. Olave's got to step to the outside. JC looks back, finds it one more time, and realizes that 
he's not going to be able to get a pick because it's a pretty good throw. So he's going to play the hands. Boom. Stick those hands in the cookie jar at the last second. Seatbelt. <laughs> One more time from this angle because these little close-up angles are really, really good to see how he played the hands. Derek Carr really let that thing ride, man. This is actually a pretty good ball. You can see right here, JC's actually kind of beat. Like I said, he once once JC finally put his head down right here, he realized that he had to get on his horse. And it was a foot race at this point. JC looks back, finds the ball, says, let me use this length. Use the length and play the hands. That's perfect. Perfect way to play the hands. Don't panic. Just stick your hands in the cookie jar right there. Get that ball out of there. That's perfect technique right there. Don't panic. Don't panic. Find the ball. Don't make contact with the man. And bring that seatbelt out, man. Child's play. I love that. Hey, real quick, I appreciate you watching, man. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well. I do plenty of film breakdowns just like this, live streams, post-game reactions, news and updates every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button. It really shows appreciation for the work I put in on this video and that engagement also, me, also helps me out in that algorithm. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, next rep. JC is very good at using that initial jam to really take the receiver completely out of the play. So he's going to be locked up man coverage right here with Olave, but they're going to motion. So he's going to be the single guy right here going up against a bigger, more physical tight end right here. But watch how he uses this physical jam, this initial shock to really just take him out of the play completely. Boom. That first initial punch right there, and it's pretty much over because he knocks the receiver off balance, and now he's in that hip pocket. And the ball is gone anyway, but this receiver never had a chance on the backside. Watch this initial jam. Being extra physical, boom. Like He's a lot more comfortable playing up closer to the receiver and to the line of scrimmage where he can take care of that airspace and use those long arms and that length that he has to really, really control and dictate the route of the wide receiver. We'll get a little bit small view right here. When they motion across to the right side of the screen right here, you'll see JC come in here at the last second. Boom. Good jam. Stay in this hip pocket. Let's ride. Look out. Look how JC gets the jam. Playing man coverage. Has his eyes in the backfield while he's riding and jamming his wide receiver. Yes, it's downfield, but they're not going to call this when you stay with him the whole time and you're not giving him any airspace. Great physical coverage by JC. Let's watch it from behind right here. Boom. It's a bigger, this is a bigger tight end. Foster Moreau is a tight end that's way bigger than JC. But he has the versatility and the physicality to be able to play bigger dudes like this. Boom. And give him a jam and even shock him and knock him off balance. I, I, he's, he's, he's almost there, guys. He's almost there. More press coverage here by JC. This is good. Just mirroring him, knowing where your help is, giving him only a one-way go, not a two-way go. Watch. He's going he's gonna to let Olave get inside. He's going to shuffle his feet. But instead of cutting him off like he normally does when I just showed on that last clip, he's going to allow him to stay inside, go inside, because, look, he knows his help here in the middle of the field right here is Xavier Woods. He knows where his help is coming from. So he's going to favor and let him get inside and stay on that hip on the outside and then get hands on him, not, not grabbing too much, but get hands on him just enough to make things uncomfortable and disrupt the timing and rhythm. Like I said, when you beat him to the spot, they're not going to call that. He knows he has help on the inside, so he's not going to worry about that. He's going to protect that outside, and Alave is trying to get to the outside. And so Alave kind of initiates that contact himself. Look, he puts that hand on JC's back to try to swim and get to the out route, but JC's in that spot, so that refs aren't going to call that. You're going to get away with that physical coverage and staying in that hip pocket. JC is way more comfortable being physical like that, man. As you can see in these couple clips, man, JC is moving well. Like I said, physical, being back to himself. He's working his technique. He has to just, as long as his body stays up, the, the, man, this guy is going to be one of the corners and the elite corners that we really expected him to be when we drafted him. I know some fans have some fatigue of him, but this dude plays a premium position at a very high level. You have to keep that type of talent and make sure that you keep him in the house and give him every opportunity to hang around. I'm not giving up on this guy yet. I'm invested. Clearly, you can see I got my eight ball jersey on. So I'm really happy with what JC has shown thus far in these couple games. I'm hoping he finishes this season strong, parlays that into a good offseason and comes back strong into that fourth season. Obviously, we have to make a decision on his fifth year option this offseason and Whoever the new coaches is and the regime, they're going to be a part of that decision as well. But like I 
said, he plays a premium position at a high level. I think he's very, very versatile in what type of scheme. And if you're a defensive coach, no matter who it's going to be, you're going to want a top top corner, a part of your program. So I'm hoping that the long-term prospects of JC on this team uh, are positive. R- hoping for the best, rooting for this dude, man. Shout out to 8-Ball, man. You guys, make sure you are subscribed, like I said, and, and make sure you stay up to date on all these videos and updates. I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.